This year after Christmas, I decided to head out and take a look around to see what was available during Boxing Day. I ended up coming across a few things while I was in J-Car. And some of these I've actually had a bit of an interest in for a while, I'll sort of point them out. While others are just, well, they were extremely cheap. Now this pile of weird goodies set me back about $15. Uh, this power supply was surprisingly the most single item, which was about five, while everything else here was only two dollars, which explains why. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, uh, I'd been looking at this for a while, to be honest. I'd seen it on the shelf, was a bit curious about it, but never really understood much about it. Maybe they're like plastic toys, so just... Toys, tools, whatever you want to call them. And interesting how it tells you to wear uh, protection gear. I'm assuming these are made in China. Doesn't have a manufacturer, so yeah, it's probably China. So yeah, this, uh, this actually piqued my interest for a long time, so I thought I might buy them. And it's probably at this point where I should be wearing those uh, protective, well, you know. But plastic tools. <laughs> it just sounds so wrong to me. It really does. How? Oh boy, those are sharp. Okay. Uh, where are my cutters? Cutters, 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 cutters. So let's get these cleaned up. Okay, uh, so that's normal, that's normal, that's normal, that feels about right. So what on earth is this for? Scraper, okay, it's a scraper and a mini little wrench. So I'm guessing that's going to be for M2 sized screws and nuts. One, uh, two points, uh, M2.6 and M1.6 screws and nuts. And then these others are different sort of sizes. So yeah, neat little uh, toolkit. Oh, we got one. Oh, I am planning to build something so this stops wobbling around and gives everyone a headache. Same as buying a microphone. Well, bleh. Ah. Uh, what do I want? A small screwdriver. Yes, I do realise I just uh, put something in a bag I could use for it, but plastic and I'd rather leave it till the uh, last minute. Now these types of torches have always interested me and I do have something like this floating around at home but yeah. So general rule when you buy something that's supposed to have a battery or should have a battery into it yeah, 
doesn't come with any. Uh, BRB. Okay, now I've got myself some triple A's. How do they go in? Yep, that's right. And that's bright as you'd expect. So, is there any... Nope. It's just a bright LED. I have to admit, I do like the locking mechanism on this, but it still feels extremely cheap. See, this type of stuff would be manufactured by a group or, you know, whatever manufacturer in China, and then it just gets rebranded by TechLite, whoever they are, Magnet Clip. Okay, so you probably can't see that if you hear it, there's a neodymium behind here, this clip seems to have enough to be able to keep itself uh, stable. So I'm going to chuck that out. That can back up. I always hate how the cheap ones always require three cells. It's better when they require two, just like my torch. So this little thing, an emergency charger. So if I take it apart, you've got a micro USB. And if you look on the back, now apparently you're supposed to clip these. Hmm. So if I take these two cells, so one should go like that. that and like that and then snaps over like a magnet so I should be able to charge something with that okay so what I got here is my battery bank and what I should be able to do is plug that into here And that thing is really squealing. Okay, so it does work. As it says, it's an emergency, so I wouldn't uh, use this on a regular basis, but wow, okay. It does work. It does work. I really need to charge that thing up. But that thing was squealing something shocking. <laughs> now this really caught my eye. I don't know about you, but a USB power booster. <laughs> I wouldn't want to plug this into my computer. <laughs> uh. So, what do we got here? Power booster. A small device that plugs into your USB port provides faster charging for smartphones or tablets. Without this device, the standard USB port will slow charge, blah, blah, blah. So, this is supposed to increase the charge capacity of a how the hell does it do that? So it looks like it's been sealed up around here. So the question is, am I able to...
There it goes. Oh. Ha ha. We re Ew. What the hell? All right. To start off with, I could sort of believe the claims if there was a large capacitor or capacitors in this thing, but obviously not. I mean, you've got this, like, tiny ass POS chip and some surface mount stuff. So if I can zoom in and that's going to send everyone into Headacheville. Will it focus? Will it focus? So you've got that tiny chip, you've got an LED, which looks like it's going to be hidden by the case because there's no... And then you have a bunch of smaller surface mount capacitors, some resistors, and a whole bunch of missing stuff from this side. <laughs> yeah, look, if it had a decent sized electrolytic capacitor in there, maybe, but... Yeah... I'm going to knock it before I try it, to be honest. I'm also not going to try it because I'm afraid it's going to blow up whatever I plug into it. But anyway, now I've got some USB ports if I need them. <laughs> oh, God. That is just wrong. That is just wrong. $2 is the reason why I'm uh, comfortable wasting it, so... It was worth a laugh. Hey. Now you got to remember that a standard USB 2 port is only capable of outputting, uh, I think it's like 500 milliamps. I had an issue with a keyboard that I have where it requires 500 milliamps to operate. And my USB on my computer would just die all of a sudden. I fixed it by using a powered USB hub. Now, not a USB hub itself, but one that is powered. That had more than enough kick in order to run the damn thing. Now, my USB doesn't suddenly drop out when I plug in an extra hard drive or a flash drive or do something with the mouse. So this is the most expensive item I had, and I'm not going to be able to fire it up, but I hope to be able to do a bit of video on that later on. So it says that it is certified. Is it distributed by? I am not even going to bother pronouncing that. So we have a 24 volt and 1.75 amp output power supply. So I'm figuring if I remove that screw, it's not in there. Shouldn't need to remove those two. I might be able to get that out. Take a look at the quality on the inside. Why on earth would I use one of these things? You little bastard. Uh oh. So it looks like it was holding some sort of transistor in place.
god, they did not make this easy to pull apart. Yeesh. I got this for Boxing Day. I want to take it apart. Okay, so that was just a retaining clip for this. Transistor. So now I need to figure out how to put that back on again. Yep, see, you got a fuse here, and I don't like how that component sits so close to it. Missing electrolytic, which probably doesn't matter. Okay, so if I'm judging by the way that's installed, this should sit like this. And then I just reverse the... Ugh. This is why things should be easier to pull apart. I will be perplexed as to why on earth they just simply don't run the... There. That should do it. And my lifesaver right now is going to be this. Isopropylene wipes. So... This power supply, I really wouldn't like the idea about using it in something that I'd rely on to save my life. But as a sort of side little project thing, yeah, I could see it. And the other thing is the uh, 1 amp is not, or the 1.7 amp is probably not enough to do a lot of things, but the 24 volt part, hmm. Put up to one of those little buck boost converters and you get yourself a decent power supply. So mini lab power supply fun. Alright, so I can put that back. I'll clean this in case we've got any of that compound on here. You gotta be careful that uh, heat sink compound is generally carcinogenic. And if you don't know what that word is, lock it up. Wow, is that kind of moldy? Hmm. Okay. Now that mistake's over. Uh. Yeah, see, the this would have been preventing me from taking it off. Oof. So we've got our adjustment pot here, which is in a really awkward position. We've got the fuse back here, which would be difficult to replace if you couldn't get this off. So, you know, fun on that if it blows. Uh, the tape on this coil here is starting to come off. So this is your atypical Chinese low quality and why on earth is that resistor leaning against that capacitor? What on earth? There's no way to put it without re... Yeah, uh, like I said, 
great for a hobby project, but actual implementation, you'd want to go with something better. This is why you spend $5 on this stuff, everybody. <laughs> you don't want to spend real money on it. <laughs> I feel sorry for anyone who did. If you were going to spend real money, though, there's a couple of, I think there's like one Japanese company that does some uh, nice power supplies. I've got one, too. So if I can reassemble this... Now I can see how it goes together. Should just slide in like that. I should be able to do a video later on, well, hopefully sooner rather than later, about how to wire this up. And actually, before I commit to anything, Try to pinch that back. Yeah, the construction of this is designed so that it's assembled in a factory and then you can't take it apart. So if it fails, buy another one. <laughs> or a better idea, buy a better one. From a reputable company. The reason why I went into J-Car, probably should have said this before, is that I kind of clogged up my desoldering station and I went in to go buy a replacement element. I'm still going to get myself a replacement... Uh, hmm, that's better. Sorry. I'm still going to buy myself a replacement gun. Turns out there's a cheaper place I can pick one up for on the mainland, which is where I've been getting my filters from. So I should be able to show that later on too, with any luck. So that should just pop in like that. I am not happy with that, but who cares. The important part is over here. I'm sorry, but when it comes to stuff like this, it better be easy to disassemble, easy to reassemble, and also easy to... But these terminals here are like your a typical standard. That is not. That is irritating. <sighs> Some more at thermal compound on me. Get rid of carcinogenic. I'm assuming these are two mounting screws to mount it into whatever device you're going to. And that's also another one. There's one there. There's two, three. So there are a couple of mounting options on this. Okay. <laughs> So that blue stuff's going to be left over from the like, plastic coating that protects the aluminium before they drill and use it for whatever. But doesn't matter now. All right. Uh, I'm going to put that back in here. And close that up. And then I'm going to open this. Now, for some reason, I always call I always call this duct tape, but no, it's cloth tape, so it's got a weaving of 
my cotton in between the sticky layer and the plastic top, which is sort of waterproof. So this stuff's really great for a lot of temporary fixes. And I think I've lost my other one. So, you know, $2 for a couple of meters of this stuff. I wish I could get the like extra wide stuff. I once made a wallet with this sort of stuff, actually. Uh, well, thanks to Mythbusters, so, you know. Hey. Anyway, that's my unboxing of stuff I decided to go and buy on Boxing Day. Yeah! Well, thanks for watching. Yibbidi-bidda.